Alright, thanks for watching. And I realized I haven't done any fractional derivative stuff for a long time. So let me remedy this and give you an actual definition of the fractional derivative. Because before I was a bit heuristic, I was saying you just take the half derivative of the half derivative is a derivative. But now let me give you an actual formula. And what I'm gonna do with this formula is show that it is in fact correct by verifying it in the case of f of x equals to x, what I did in a previous video. So here's the actual definition. The fractional derivative of f is given by the following very interesting integral. Here's what you do. You take the function f, and you take some sort of a weight average that's very bad at x. So x minus t to the alpha. Okay. So you divide it by this term that makes this function blow up at x. And then you integrate it from 0 to x. So look, here t goes from 0 to x. So at zero, it's not bad, it's like x to the alpha, but then at x, this is very bad because it's f of x divided by zero. So whatever bad thing happens at x, you want to make it blow up. And then the curious thing is, you start with this, and then this very bad integral, you make it even worse by differentiating. So d over dx. So you take the integral, take the derivative, and you're tempted just to use FTC, but that's not quite true because there is an x in here which makes it very singular. And lastly, you just multiply by some constant, gamma of 1 minus alpha. So a normalizing constant if you want. And ta-da! This is the definition of the fractional derivative. And just one little thing though, this is only valid for alpha between 0 and 1. So don't try to check that this gives you the derivative because it doesn't, because alpha is between 0 and 1. And before I continue, you may ask, well, what if alpha is greater than 1? How would you calculate, let's say, the 3 halves derivative of f? Then, you would first calculate the derivative of f using the usual formula, and then you take the half derivative of that. Half derivative with this formula. Okay. So indeed, it works for every alpha, and in fact also for negative alpha, if you just consider integration. The negative alpha you know, derivative is the alpha integral. Okay, wonderful. And so in particular, I want to use this to check that we indeed get the same formula for the half derivative of x. So the half derivative of x, if you plug this in, so if alpha is 1 half, then you get 1 over gamma of 1 half of d over dx integral from 0 to x of f, which becomes x, so f of t is t, divided by x minus t to the 1 half, so square root of x minus t, dt. Okay. And as I said, never, I don't know never, but in, in those examples, please don't just use the FTC, because the point is, this function here is a singularity, so it's usually important to just evaluate the integral itself. So let's indeed do that. So we get that. First of all, this constant, I evaluated this in this half derivative video. It equals to 1 over square root of pi and then d over dx. And for the integral, I want to sort of get rid of the denominator, so I use this u substitution. u is x minus t, then du is minus dt, 
and then u at 0, if you plug in t equals to 0 equals to x, if you plug in t equals to x, it becomes 0. So it's the integral from, zero, from x to 0 of whatever, but because of this minus sign, it puts it in the correct order. So it still becomes integral from 0 to x. t becomes x minus u. And then the denominator is square root of u du. And it turns out, once we have it in this formulation, it becomes easier to evaluate. Because let's see, so it becomes 1 over square root of pi d over dx. OK, so integral of you know, x over square root of u, an antiderivative just becomes 2x square root of u. Because the derivative of square root of u is 1 over 2 square root of u. And you know, to remedy this to 1 over 2, you just multiply it by 2. And then this one becomes, if you want, minus u over square root of u, which is minus square root of u, which is minus u to the 1 half. So an antiderivative becomes, so u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves. And to remedy this, multiply by 2 thirds. And you take this from u equals to 0 to u equals to x. And here's something interesting happening. As I said before, this integral may have a singularity, but because of our substitution, the singularity disappears, and therefore we can just legitimately plug in u equals to 0 here. And we get 1 over square root of pi d over dx of so. 2x square root of x, so 2x to the 3 halves, minus 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, and then minus 0 plus 0, which is 0. And let's quickly simplify this. So it's 1 over square root of pi. 2 minus 2 thirds, that's 4 thirds. So let's just pull it out. 4 thirds, d over dx x to the 3 halves. And notice that we took the um, integration problem and just turned it into a simple differentiation problem. So in the end, the integral is in fact just in terms of x. And now differentiate this. Again, no singularity, so we're good. So it's 4 thirds times 3 halves x to the 1 half. And this simplifies the 3 simplify the 4 over 2, that is 2, so you get 2 over square root of pi square root of x. So in other words, formally, you know, like with the definition, the half derivative of x is 2 over square root of pi square root of x. Which is exactly the same formula I obtained in the half derivative video. So it does work, yay. And now that, again, it's not a proof, but hopefully now you're convinced that this does work. But the next time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same formula that is super far powerful to calculate the half derivative of ln of x. And you'll see even here it's possible. Trickier, but possible. All right, so if you like this half derivative excursion, and you want to see more interesting math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.